Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about how to use dehydrated and freeze-dried foods. Whether it be foods that you dehydrate up yourself from your own garden or dried foods that you buy from the store or the freeze-dried foods you buy or maybe you freeze-dry them yourselves. So I'm going to be talking about some of the various different ways that I use them and hopefully uh, some of you can come in and share down below especially if you have some ideas that are different than mine how you like to use your freeze-dried and dehydrated foods it doesn't matter where you get them from just share with us how you use them so what I'm going to start with is right here I've got some fruits now the figs right here are ones I got from Costco they're organic figs I stocked up on a bunch of them while they still had them on their online store because we don't get into the next town over because it's you know where our closest Costco is is 75 miles away and a lot of times it's just not worth the time and the fuel and the wear and tear on the rig driving in there so I like to buy a lot of stuff from Costco.com they had figs in for a while the organic ones and I fell in love with them and right now I have three uh, fig plants but I don't know when I'll see fruit so I was glad I stocked up on them and then vacuum sealed them into jars now these these aren't for cooking with these are simply for snacking on that's why I have these some of the dehydrated fruits that I either purchase or dehydrate myself are solely for snacking on usually when I do like dehydrate bananas that's why I love dehydrating bananas and snacking on them they're so much better than the ones that you buy from the store but when it comes to some other things like I don't really like snacking on dehydrated apples but i dehydrated up a bunch of them in fact these ones are from 2015 for the sake of using and making pies whether it be a fried apple pie or just a dehydrated apple pie obviously you're going to reconstitute it first in either case and what i found is really good and i have a video out that i did a while back on making a dehydrated apple pie is if you take the apples and then cook them a little bit the dried apples in some kind of fruit juice it can be any flavor you want the first time i tried this i cooked them in an apple cherry juice and oh my goodness they were so good they had that cherry flavor they were so tasty so i didn't add any cinnamon to those i just kind of gave let the juice be the flavoring so any juice that you either like to purchase or you make yourself off of your own produce will work for that and just it just adds so much flavor but you can use apple juice too so you get an even more powerful apple flavor so that's one way you can use up things like dried apples uh rhubarb i like to dehydrate it for using to add to other fruits later whether it be for making pies or jams anything like that so the dehydrated rhubarb that's what i'm going to do with that i'm going to cook it into uh, whatever else it is so maybe it's a rhubarb peach or a rhubarb currant blueberry pie that's one that I like to make and usually that one since I'll, I'll have rhubarb coming in the same time as the blueberries and the currants I'll just use fresh rhubarb but down the road you can all you can do the same thing with your dehydrated you just cook it in with your other fruits so later in the year maybe I'll pull out a jar of frozen blueberries and then take some uh, dehydrated rhubarb and then cook those together to make a pie or even a jam if I want now when it comes to the freeze-dried stuff that I get from Mother Earth products right here this is just a sampling I've got some raspberries I've got mangoes and I've got pineapple these a lot of times get used as flavoring in different things whether it be my homemade chocolates or the gummies like that time I like that video I did I'll link to down below on making the raspberry gummies so I used some of my own uh, homegrown homemade grape juice and added some freeze-dried raspberries to it and processed it up so I made it really tasty they were so good raspberry gummies out of those you can do the same thing with the pineapple and the mango if you're making gummies I recommend processing them up into a powder that's what's great about freeze-dried is they 
they powder up super easily and so that makes it great for flavoring anything i've also used like the pineapple whole or the mango as is when i made homemade chocolate when i do it more like a solid piece in a pie pan and i have a video on this i think i have one where i did mango another one where i did pineapple where i did like a tropical one with coconut i'll go ahead and link to that one down below but it's just super easy. I just sprinkle it into the pan and then make up the chocolate and then pour it over and let it set and it's really good. Oh, and I put coconut in there, of course, too. So that's one way if I'm gonna use it whole. I've also powdered these up and used them to uh, flavor icings that I put on top of various things. Like the video I did a while back on the pineapple coconut bread. I have a recipe on that. It's my own recipe and I'll link to that down below so you can check it out. But yes, I use the pineapple in the icing itself to give it more of that pineapple flavor and it, it turned out really good. It took a lot of pineapple though. It's just something I would do once in a while as a special occasion. But that's a great thing about freeze-dried foods like this because you can powder it up and use it as a flavoring or you can use them whole. You can cook them into various things, uh, whatever it is. Now, another thing I like to use the freeze dried fruits for is making flavored extracts. So I've made a pineapple one. I haven't done mango, but I've made pineapple. I've made raspberry. When you're making flavored extracts, it's usually best to use dried fruit. And in this case, freeze-dried is going to be best when you're talking about some of these because dehydrating certain fruits changes the flavor but freeze-dried keeps that flavor the same as what it tastes like when it's fresh so for that that's why i like using the freeze-dried fruits for making the extracts now some things like oranges and lemons you can dehydrate those up yourself and use those for making extracts and those will still keep that good lemon or orange flavor that you want in your extract so i've done that i've made both orange and i've made lemon just by taking uh, fresh oranges or lemons slicing them up dehydrating them and then starting my extract with that now I have a couple of different videos on extract making that I will I'll link to at least one of them down below my new favorite way now though of making an extract is using my own homemade wine and some raw honey so I do for that what I do is about three parts of homemade wine and one part honey I do plan on doing an update video on that just focusing on how to make extracts that way but if I can figure out which one it was it might have been a this in that video I'll go ahead and link to that down below and then let's not forget these things remember how I said they taste the same freeze-dried as they do fresh it's just a different in texture you're, it's like eating a crunchy fresh pineapple when you eat your pineapple this way that means you can snack on it I actually love snacking on freeze-dried fruits like this and so sometimes I'll take the mango and pineapple and mix them together in the bowl there's no added sugar just the sugar that's already naturally in those fruits and so it's just a really nice tasty sweet treat that's also crunchy at the same time okay now let's move on to some meats I, I brought out two different uh, dehydrated meats here that I've done myself so this is ground beef that I dehydrated up and you can see the jar is half full it is vacuum sealed though now I had the jar full I had this was just me doing a trial run I'm going to be doing lots more of this because I'm loving this so much so the reason this is only half full is because I've been working through it. I've used it twice now for making my spaghetti sauce. So, and I still have half a jar left. And that was uh, making spaghetti sauce twice because remember it's dehydrated. So it's a lot smaller than it's going to be once it's cooked up. When I go to make my sauce, I just make it my sauce the way I normally would from scratch. And then I can sprinkle in as much of the dehydrated hamburgers I want and it's already it's just ready to go it's already cooked it's already brown i don't have to pull out some hamburger from the freezer and then thaw it and then brown it and then add it this is ready to go so i'm loving this so much and it takes up less room in general and it saves freezer space so i'm actually going to be getting in there and making some more room in my freezer by pulling out some of the ground meat we've got a lot of ground uh venison in there i want i need to work through from a couple of different deer that patrick got so i need to get that out and i'm going to do that i'm going to brown it up and then dehydrate it up and then have it ready to go for making my sauces or a soup this would be great for adding to a soup another way i like to dry up and preserve meat as you can see this is actually from 2017 
This is, uh, what is this one? This one's elk jerky. We ended up doing some bartering and got some elk meat from a friend. And this was a couple years back. So as you can see, 2017, so three years ago. And I dehydrated up the elk jerky. Now this is strictly for just eating right out of the jar. So what I usually do with this, it's rare that I'll open up one just as just a snack on. Normally what this is, is something that I will send along with Patrick when, because he occasionally drives down to California to go help his dad on his place do some work and he'll stay down there for a week or two. And so what I like to do is send him along with some jerky to keep in the rig with them and some other snacks as well. But this is a good healthy snack that he can have that he can munch on on his trip, on his long drives to and from his dad's place. Okay, so now let's move on to talk about some vegetables. So the way I use my dehydrated and freeze dried vegetables, there's two main ways I do it. The number one most common way I'm going to use my dehydrated vegetables is to use them directly in something. I very rarely rehydrate the things. Some of it is, you know, home drying stuff like this is my own homegrown tomatoes that I processed up and in the blender, then poured them on my dehydrator and dried them up like a fruit leather and then just broke them up into flakes. And that is what I use to make my spaghetti sauce. I'll combine that with some home canned tomatoes and then this is used for thickening it up so I don't have to worry about cooking it down for so long. It doesn't take near as long to cook it. I don't need to have a tomato paste. I just add that, the flakes, and that thickens it up. That's one of the ways it thickens it up. The other things I do are using some of the various vegetables. So I have my mixed greens blend. My mixed greens blend is all stuff I've grown here on our property. Various different things from stinging nettle to strawberry leaves, grape leaves, dandelion leaves, kale, rutabaga leaves, carrot tops, whatever it is. I dehydrate that stuff up and then just kind of, you know, flake it up and put it in here. And that goes in just about any meal I'm going to cook, whether it be a soup, uh, my Italian sauce, a casserole. I just throw it right into whatever the liquid is going to be. I also put it in gravies and, and other types of sauces. But yes, soups are going to be the number one thing. So I've got some homegrown dehydrated green beans here, some homegrown dehydrated snow peas, some Mother Earth product organic non-GMO sweet corn, some Mother Earth product carrots, my homegrown dehydrated zucchini. This goes in a lot of things. I do also add this one to my spaghetti sauce as well, or my Italian sauce, as well as the carrots. And if you're interested, I have a few different videos out about my spaghetti slash Italian sauce. I have one that's just a basic sauce that I use, and then the changes I add are according to what I'm going to use it with. And so I'll link to that down below. I don't remember at the time how old that video is if I was adding my own homegrown zucchini pieces in there, but I do now. So it's just a way to get more of that zucchini used up as well as add more nutrition to the sauce. But all of these things also go in the soups, whatever soups or stew you're gonna make. I also use the onions and the garlic I get from Mother Earth products. And I have a recipe video on just making a soup using dehydrated goods that I will link to down below. That's the easiest way to use them up and it's also the easiest way to make some soup. When it comes to certain other things, there are times I like to rehydrate uh, the different vegetables for using in certain meals. A while back I did a video, it's not going to be a traditional Mongolian beef because I was I was using dehydrated foods to do this. So I used uh, some carrots in there and some other things that I had dehydrated and then I rehydrated them before I used them in making the Mongolian beef. The same goes for what I'm gonna do next and tonight I'm making some pizza. Our, our uh, youngest son likes to come over once a week and just hang with us and we play, we like to play rock band or apples to apples or ping pong or whatever in the game room there. And so I've got some dehydrated mushrooms here from Mother Earth Products that I want to use on the pizza. And I did this the last time I made pizza for us and it turned out really good. And so all I do is I take, you got to remember whenever you're rehydrating something that's already freeze dried or dehydrated, it's going to it's going to expand just like it shrinks up when you dry it. So I'm going to use a couple of handfuls. So all I got to do is add 
some water. I'm using our own filtered rainwater here. And then I like to just occasionally just kind of keep checking them and just uh, push them down into the liquid. And then just let them sit for as long as is needed to get them fully rehydrated. And then after that, what you're going to do is you just simply strain off any excess water. And if it's, you know, especially since this is going on pizza, I'm, I might even take my little fork and kind of try to squeeze out some of the extra liquid so it doesn't... Uh, you know, it doesn't make it mushy on the top or anything like that. So this applies to any vegetable that's dehydrated or freeze dried. You just simply can rehydrate it in the case that you're going to use it in something like that where it's not going to go in a sauce or a soup. But again, if you're using it, if you're going to be cooking it into something that's already in a liquid form, such as sauces and soups and stews and gravies, then you can throw them directly in there. Now, it might be that you'll need to add a little more liquid. Like, let's say you're making a white gravy, you might need to add more milk to it. And that can be a nut milk if you're vegan. In fact, I have a vegan white gravy slash sauce recipe that I will, I will link to down below if you're interested. You just, you might need to add more of that milk uh, to compensate for all the different dehydrated or freeze-dried foods that you're using in there. Otherwise, it might get too thick. So you got to keep that in mind. But it's really super simple using your different dehydrated and freeze-dried foods in meals. It's just you're going to either rehydrate it by cooking it into the food or you're simply going to soak it a little bit first. Now, some other options are depending on what you're doing, like for this, I'm gonna add something to it for just for the sake of flavor. And what I'm gonna do here is add just a little splash of my home, own homemade apple wine from our own trees. And that will just kind of give it even more of an Italian flavor since it's going on pizza. And then that flavor will soak into those mushrooms and it should taste pretty darn good. So if you think of something like, maybe you're gonna be making an Asian dish and like i did with the mongolian beef i don't remember if i did that then or not but you can take your various vegetables that you're wanting to add to that meal that you're going to want to soak first because maybe you're going to stir fry them that's the other thing i was going to say if you're going to stir fry them and i've done this before too you rehydrate them first so what you can do is to the water, you can add a little bit of um, other flavoring such as maybe your Bragg's liquid aminos or your coconut aminos into the water that you're soaking it in. We'll soak that up and add even more flavor to whatever dish you're using it in. Now keep in mind the stuff that I pulled out here, this is just a sampling of the things that I have on hand for you know dehydrated and freeze dried foods. And I've got tons more, tons of just all kinds of varieties. I just pulled a few out so I could give you some examples. Another freeze-dried food that I really love that I'm hoping Mother Earth products will be able to get in soon is the freeze-dried cheddar cheese. I also have freeze-dried mozzarella cheese. Now, the thing about the freeze-dried cheeses is they don't quite melt the same way a fresher cheese will, but they're still very good. They do soften up and I've used them in various things. Uh, my weakness is, is once I open a jar, because I was buying uh, from another company and getting it in number 10 cans, and then when I open a jar or uh, open a can, I'll fill up a few of these jars and then vacuum seal them because it can't work through the can fast enough to keep it from turning stale. And so this is a really good way to do that if you're, whether it be fruits, vegetables, or whatever, if you're buying from a company, like Mother Earth products sells in bags. This is just their small bag that you can get any size you want, up to 25 pounds of certain types. Since I like to open it up and put it in jars anyway, once it's open, you can do the same thing with your number 10 cans. If you're not gonna work through it fast enough, you just open it up, take out what you need and then take the rest and put it into jars like this and vacuum seal it so that then you don't have to worry about it and it will keep just fine in there. Of course, now it's going to be exposed to more light. So you're still going to want to work through these before you open up any more number 10 cans. But anyway, 
The cheese is so good just as is. It's crunchy. It's just like a really high-end cheese cracker. But I've used this a lot, uh, sampling it, like using it and making omelets and stuff for Patrick. Just sprinkle it right in there with the eggs. And then when you cook it, it does soften it. it like I said, it doesn't melt the same way as your fresh cheese will, but it doesn't stay crunchy when it's cooked in there. It's going to absorb the liquids. You can also choose to pre-soak your cheese first but you want to make sure you strain off all of the extra liquid once it's uh once it's rehydrated so that you can do that i just never have i've usually just cooked it right into things like that i did open up a can of the mozzarella before i've used it on the pizza it does work like i said it just doesn't melt and spread out the same way it softens up and it's there but it just stays in that same shape it doesn't spread out and, and the way like a fresh cheese does that's the only real difference but it still works and i did that without i did not uh reconstitute it first i just put it directly on there and used it i've used it in several things and maybe it wasn't pizza it might have been a lasagna anyway i've used the mozzarella before and it does work so it's nice to have that on hand but i like to keep the rest of it in the number 10 cans as a backup if i ever can't get fresh cheese and i and we don't have a cow or goat i could make that stuff myself i just don't do it that very very often because we have to purchase any of the milk that we get if i gotta purchase the milk anyway i'm gonna go ahead and just purchase the cheese separately and not bother with that okay well i think i covered all the points i meant to cover in this but if you have any questions it's very likely i left something out uh, this is just a basic idea of some of the things you can do the way it works is going to be virtually the same all the way across the board uh, for freeze-dried and for dehydrated so maybe you have another vegetable or fruit that i didn't mention here yes you would use it the same way so dehydrated is just a little bit different than freeze dried in the way it works and the way you can use it, but virtually it's still the same. You can still reconstitute them. You can still throw them into soups. Either one will work. I just find for certain things like the pizza topping, dehydrated mushrooms are better. And for flavorings, for powdering up, freeze dried is better. But most of the other stuff works pretty much the same. Okay, well, I hope this is helpful and it gives you some ideas. And go ahead and share your own ideas in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.